w whether strange or, or realistic, what it does feel like is this is <laughs> he's, he's got, this is his his uh, his you know concluding monologue, and he's got to bring it. And that sense of urgency that like look, people, the stakes are very very high. Um, and yeah, that's what. Well, and I mean. since when is he a prophet? I mean, that's. That's not the capacity of leadership to which he's been called so far. To in prophesy the Bible. in the future. No. Moshe's not a prophet. Right. He's a, a somewhat failed leader, guide, authority figure. Right, and a relayer of, of information on right. the tablets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Since when is he a prophet? He's, right. he, he wants to go out big though. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well it's, it's it's you know, maybe he's he's been yes, he's been transmitting He's been kind of the vessel that, mm -hmm. that uh, Hashem has, has chosen. Yeah, but now maybe he's, I don't know, maybe he's, he's feeling his oats a little bit here at the end and he's, he's you know, he's getting a little Jeremiah on us. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think that, he, I mean, I guess um, just a little kind of a, a tangent, but he, he in that, in that effort, I guess to 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 really bring it and 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 communicate, he's kind of validating the, impo the 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 vast importance of everything he said before. I guess is that this is this is um, this is how big it is, um, uh, you know, by by kind of laying out the the consequences of success or failure. But the whole, you know, I can't help but and I'm coming. We're all coming to this with our own uh, windows and shutting up. Yeah, it's uh, going to stop back up. There were some problems. Um, We're still live on the camera. Okay. The, but the, the it, it's, um, I'm, I'm not, we're all coming to it with our own kind of con conceptual baggage. And for me, it's funny, you know, I know that they're talking about us when he says that um, this covenant is, the covenant is made not with uh, with the people who are there at Sinai at the time, but with, um, you know, those who are standing, uh, who, those who are not here. And traditionally, you know, I think, the, I'm sure the art scroll, commentary is that, well, that means you, people. That means me. And I'm just, you know, I, I my honest reaction to that is just, <laughs> no. Uh, I you don't, don't know. feel bound by this. I, no, I've been raised, look, I've been um, brainwashed by ideas like informed consent, and I'm not really interested in, in passing uh, on the, I, you know, responsibility for the decisions I make in my own life um, to, to anyone else, and certainly not to, you know, the guy who's telling us that, you know, um, uh, uh, um, uh, having strength of your convictions is the route to, dead, you know, to, to um, perdition. So, I, no, I'm just not interested. I, I, it doesn't mean I'm not interested in, in anything in the book, but I'm not, no one has, has uh, established a covenant on my behalf. If they thought they were doing that, sorry. Uh, you often hear in modern times, think for yourself, and it's just such not a, there's nothing in, in right. this book about thinking for yourself. Right, well, and thinking for yourself is not an easy thing to do. We're social animals, and we get all sorts of cues from the people around us. But, well, um, we, we get the social cue now that we're supposed to think for ourselves. That's like the right. modern thing to do. But that's not... Since the Enlightenment. I think that's such a Jewish thing, though. I think that's, that's a very why? Cool thing. I think what? it's here. Where? I think the notion of covenant is evolving. I think right. that just the, the, the way in which Torah is constructed right. forces us to think for ourselves. It's like retellings of the same stories over and over and over again. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I do feel, I mentioned this the other day, I mean, I do kind of feel the same way. I, there's, what I'd mentioned before was just the way, you know, maybe this is a cliche, but just the way that the, you know, the Talmud is laid, laid out with the Mishnah and then you have the Gemara around it and there's, Lots of interpretations, and they, they have the confidence to say, "Teku, we're not going to agree on this. Right. We'll have to wait till you know the guy who knows everything comes and tells us the answers." Um, so there is a, a, a kind of a discourse, a discourse thing that's really that the tradition seems to generate. I mean, I feel like that was part of what I got from it growing up, and yet at the same time, when I read the the Torah, um, I, I see very very little uh, 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 um, incitement to that sort of behavior. <laughs> but is it not possible that Torah is full of examples of what not to do, of how not to behave, of how not to establish a covenant? I mean, I'm just, you know, in the spirit yeah. of turn it and turn it, there's always another way. I just wonder if, I mean, since when are Jews literalists? 
when it comes to reading the Bible. Since when are we literalists? Right. So why are we going to... But if you just I, take right. this text at face value... What does that mean, though? What does that mean to take it at face value? Well, Moses is telling the Israelites what to do. He's, there's nothing in there about thinking for yourself. There's nothing in the text about thinking for yourself. It's a modern Goetia notion that you've been infected with, that you're reading it's back right. into the text. You, yeah. You can't take Perhaps. you can't take this text out of context, though. You can't do that. I mean, this, the the pushing the here, the here is is actually too. I mean, we've got. Well, I'm in the wrong book, but De Deuteronomy 29, but then Deuteronomy 30 is said to be a later edition. Right. But we're looking at them together, so we've just kind of spliced them together because we want to look at them in this way. Right. Well, why, why this splicing? Why not something else? Why? Why? So you don't think the splicing is uh, authoritative? No, I do. I do. But I also think that we have to be aware of the context, the larger right. context. I, I certainly agree with that. I, I, I guess my... I've said many times before I have no objection to anything that's here because I'm willing to look at it contextually and, and the only question that matters to me now is what do you, you do with it? This was sure. written and, and codified and, and, and spliced at a time where people's um, concerns were very different from my own. Testing! <laughs> but, but, but what I, I guess what I react um, negatively to is the, is the, the pretense mm -hmm. in all traditions, uh, it's mm -hmm. just as bad among the Orthodox as it is among the more, uh, you know, non-orthodox denominations, this essentialist thing that everyone hits you with, which is that this is what it says and this is what it always meant, and, and um, it, I, I'm, I'm, that's too much of a, there's a lot of people who don't do that, but, but, um, but they don't present it. I mean, if you're in a, a, um, an orthodox shul, they're not interested in, in examining the context in which 29 and 30 were put next to one another. This was, sure. this is the perfect word of of a, of, of a big boss. Um, uh, uh, I mean, th that's how essentially how they approach it, sure. I, I think. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. that's divine, and right. it's perfect. It's divine and it's perfect. So it's... But, 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 but that, that's true, that's true. But the question is, what does that mean? What does perfect mean? So to, to be perfect, I mean, I, I, I see this as full of contradictions. Right. I mean, I think that's what makes, you know, the Hebrew Bible here, I think that's what makes it the greatest text in the history of the world. Right. I mean, because of all the contradictions that meet, make it, you know, in some way make sense. I mean, that's the point. But that's a very sophisticated way of looking at it. And I can, I can appreciate that. But, um, but, but that's not... Someone who can look at it and say, "Look, part of the greatness of this text is that it is rife with 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 contradictions, mm -hmm. and that and that um, you know the resolution is always going to be ambiguous." And I mean, that's right. that is not what goes on from the people who play, who who pe people make decisions today, um, not based on that. Uh, the people who think they live this book, mm -hmm. um, right. they make decisions about how they organize their mm -hmm. communities and, and and what behavior, how to behave, how to live. Not based on that um, approach, based on the idea that like um, there are there are very correct answers and very wrong answers, and that's right. really all there is. And mm. and we're you know, and there are human consequences to that. So with the with your reading, Monica, how do you determine which things you'll abide by and which things you won't? <laughs> she, she follows the will of her own heart. I bet. <laughs> I'm one of those who fancies himself immune in verse 18. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stun her. Um, right. Stun her. Right. 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 You're alive standing right here on the cab. Well, not immune. From, uh, is it immune from the influence of it? I bet not, but uh, immune from their No, if it says keep the Sabbath, or if it says don't worship idols, or it says um, don't mix linen and wool, how do you know when to abide by it? How do you know when not to? I, I, I mean, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to tell no, you no, what I think I, I, according I to this anything. text? No, no, I'm tell curious. Me really feel. Yeah, tell, tell me how you yeah, really feel. Yeah, because how I really feel, yeah, how I really feel, really feel. is, um, I hate to say it's a matter of the heart, because that sounds really cliche. Um, but it's a matter of the heart. I've just, you know, I've just been reading your favorite. I've been reading um, an essay, an old essay by Emmanuel Levinas that was um, just recently translated into English in the past couple of years. Um, and... He talks about how it's, when it comes to ritual, it's not 
it's what it's the actual act of carrying it out 